She was the largest ship in the world, but in 1937, she was deliberately sunk and abandoned in the Falklands. For 30 years, the sea swallowed her whole, exposing her to corrosion and storms, utterly forgotten. Yet, in 1970, her battered hull was salvaged to make the impossible journey home to Bristol for a restoration that would defy belief. This is her incredible story. The SS Great Britain was the brainchild of the legendary engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel, launched in 1843 in Bristol. At the time of her launch, she was an engineering marvel, boasting two revolutionary firsts. She was the first large iron-hulled ship and the first major vessel to be powered by a screw propeller. Her sheer size made her the largest ship afloat, symbolizing the dawn of modern maritime transport and cementing Brunel's reputation as a visionary who changed global shipping forever. By the 1880s, the SS Great Britain was operating as a cargo clipper, far from her opulent passenger days. In 1886, sailing around Cape Horn, she was severely damaged in a storm and forced to limp into Port Stanley in the Falkland Islands for emergency repairs. The damage was too great and the cost of the voyage home too high. The British government eventually sold her to the Falkland Islands Company to be used as a simple storage hulk. For nearly a century, she served this inglorious purpose. After being towed to the remote settlement of Sparrow Cove, the great ship was unceremoniously scuttled in the shallow waters, sunk into the muddy seabed to prevent her from being battered by the gales. Her once proud iron frame corroded, her decks rotted. She became an anonymous fixture, a decaying monument to a bygone era, slowly sinking into the landscape. Not all of the giant ship, however, was left to decay in Sparrow Cove. Before she was scuttled, parts of her structure were salvaged. Most notably, her massive mizzen mast was removed and transported to Victory Green in Port Stanley, the capital of the Falklands. For decades, this mast stood proudly in the town, repurposed as a flag mast and serving as a poignant, tangible memorial to the magnificent ship that had been forced to surrender its working life in the distant South Atlantic waters. In the late 1960s, a movement began to rescue Brunel's ship, spearheaded by naval architect Ewan Corlett and shipping enthusiast Jack Hayward. The ship's condition was dire. Decades of salt water and ice had opened a massive, 100-foot-long fracture in her hull. She was heavily laden with tons of Falklands mud, transporting a 3,000-ton, 322-foot-long wreck halfway across the world was an unprecedented challenge. Corlett devised a plan as ambitious as Brunel's original design. They couldn't just float her. She would fall apart. They needed a giant submersible cradle. The salvage team faced immense logistical hurdles. They first had to patch the massive hole in the ship's hull underwater using an intricate system of steel plates and concrete to make her watertight enough to refloat. In 1970, the bespoke salvage vessel, a huge floating pontoon named Moulis, arrived. The salvage operation was a tense, delicate dance against the tide. The team pumped out the water, cautiously raising the Great Britain from the seabed. Once refloated, they maneuvered the fragile iron hull onto the waiting Moulis. On April 13, 1970, with the vast wreck cradled safely on the pontoon, the long, slow, 8,000-mile journey home began. Towed by the German tugboat Various, the combined SS Great Britain and Moulis pontoon set off across the Atlantic. The tow was fraught with peril, battling storms and the structural fragility of the antique vessel. The speed was agonizingly slow, just five knots. After a six-week crossing that gripped the public imagination, the ship reached the Bristol Channel. The moment was deeply emotional for the crowds that gathered. It was a resurrection, a national relic returning to her birthplace. The final leg of the journey required a precision operation. She had to be brought up the winding, narrow River Avon. On July 19, 1970, Cheered by thousands lining the banks, the Great Britain was carefully navigated to the mouth of the river. Finally, she was towed back into the very dry dock, the Great Western Dockyard, in Bristol where Isambard Kingdom Brunel had launched her 127 years earlier in 1843. The continuous struggle of conservation remains paramount even in 2025. Looking ahead, the SS Great Britain Trust is embarking on a bold, $1 million transformation project called Global Voyages, centered around a complete reimagining of the Dockyard Museum.
This major development supported by significant funding and scheduled to cause a closure in spring 2026 before a reopening later that year, aims to tell the stories of the more than 30,000 passengers and crew who traveled aboard the ship. Critically, the project emphasizes collaboration with Bristol's diverse communities, ensuring the new immersive experience reflects the full breadth of international journeys and the lived experiences of those connected to the historic vessel. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe for more. Thank you.